Overnight, Donald Trump arriving at Trump Tower. Ahead of the trial in the city he once called home. It's a disgrace. The former president, his sons, and his namesake company facing a $250 million civil fraud suit brought by the state's attorney general accusing the Trump organization and its executives of overstating his properties and assets by billions, lying on their annual financial statements to get more favorable loan terms. It's what happens if he is found liable? What would that mean potentially for his businesses, for him personally? So if the attorney general gets what she wants, it would mark the end of the Trump organization as we know it. There would be a receiver that would effectively take control. And actually, if they get the judgment, the $250 million, they would probably have to liquidate assets in order to pay that judgment. So it's a significant, significant stakes here. If you've ever wondered why it's taken you so long to figure out what's happening now in American politics, don't blame yourself, it's not your fault. It's hard for most Americans to comprehend the total dishonesty of American liberalism. Virtually nothing the liberal says is true. And the lies are not ordinary lies. The lies are so brazen, so aggressive and unending that it's difficult for a normal person to understand what's happening. 30 years ago, for example, liberals began to lecture us softly at first and then in an increasingly high volume, about tolerance. How could you have known then that they planned, in fact, to usher in the most intolerant age in American history? They've done that now, but few people saw it coming. We shouldn't make the same mistake again. Liberals are now telling us they plan to protect American democracy, and that's the clearest possible sign that they intend to end it. 13 months from this week, the United States will hold a national election. In a democracy, citizens can vote for the candidate of their choice. That's not just a feature, it's the defining fact of the electoral system. The people rule. They can send anyone they want to Washington because they're in charge. But this year, in the name of protecting democracy, liberals have decided to strip Donald Trump's name from the ballot in states across the country. Trump is the front runner in the presidential race. He's currently beating Joe Biden in the polls. Yet liberals have decided that you should not be allowed to elect him president. That's not democracy. It's the opposite. It's totalitarianism. Just this morning, Donald Trump appeared in court in New York in a civil case brought by the state's attorney general that was designed explicitly to keep him out of the White House. That case is part of a larger legal barrage against Trump that so far includes a total of 91 felony counts, every one of them politically motivated. But today's civil case is especially absurd. In fact, it's hard to overstate its ridiculousness. In sum, Trump stands accused of inflating the value of collateral used to secure loans, loans that he has already paid back with interest. In other words, there is no injured party in this case. The biggest banks in the world assessed the risk and they made a profit, as they almost always do. Not a single person was defrauded. For this non-crime, Trump and his children are in the process of losing their homes and their businesses. Here's MSNBC's live coverage of the hearing today. And as you watch, pay special attention to the judge in the case, Arthur N. Gorin. There he is, the judge, mugging like he's on stage in a middle school play, grinning, preening for the camera. Arthur N. Gorin is thrilled to be on MSNBC. It's nauseating. This is not a legal proceeding. This is a grotesque parody of the system that our forefathers created, the fairest in the world, that in the years since has been seized by power worshipers like Arthur and Gorin. This is a dangerous moment. Without a legitimate legal system, people will no longer follow the law and the country will collapse. This is not about Trump. This is about preserving the United States of America. But Trump is at the center of the story. Continue and we will finish the draining of the swamp once and for all. The great silent majority is rising like never before, and that is happening. I've never seen, I've never seen spirit or enthusiasm like we have this time. More so than 2020, more so than 2016, and we had a lot. We had it in records, but it's never, because now they see how bad these people are. They're evil, they're sick. And under our leadership, the forgotten men and women will be forgotten no longer. With your help, your love, and your vote, we will put America first, and 
We will make America great again, bigger and better than ever before. Thank you, South Carolina. Thank you.